the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wolden. We've got a jam-packed show for you, but of course we can't get to the topics because we got to get to our guests and my co-host, Andrew Brethauer. How are you? I'm doing great. So? Not too bad with the Lloydminster source. Of course, you're getting ready to go. So hopefully everything is uh, good for you and we'll get things uh, underway mm -hmm. as well. This man right here, Brett Morton, you're familiar with the show as well with New Cap Sports. We're pleased to have you on. How you been? Good. Thanks for having me again. Glad to be in your presence, but most importantly, I'm glad to be able to be in the presence of Sir Breathauer. <laughs> Sir exactly. Breathauer, yeah. when did this happen? We should, yeah, hopefully on my title they put that now. Yeah, right. They, Sir Breathauer. They spell my name right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's because, of the, well, yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen. We put Sir there, we try to honor you. Somehow they're going to Got to knock you down a little bit more, Exactly. Right? <laughs> but that's how it goes. But regardless, thanks for coming on, guys. I guess we're going to talk about a, a certain guy who definitely deserves a lot of praise and that is a certain May Witz, uh, Ray Mitzwink, that is. And, of course, for those who are uh, not familiar with this man, uh, if you don't follow Chucks, uh, well, you should. Because, of course, the second half of the CPCA season got underway last weekend. Ray Mitzwink picked up where he left off just before heading to Calgary. He now holds back-to-back -back show titles, winning at Onion Lake. And then St. Wahlberg, he now leads the driver's standings, leaping Chris Molly. And my question for you, I'm going to start with you, Andrew. <laughs> is this a sign of Ray Mitsuing emerging because he's taken over your boy's spot as the front runner for the CPCA title? Or is he peaking too early? My boy, Chris Molly. No. Um, see, it's weird because if you look at the standing and how the season's gone, Molly started great, then fell off. Jamie started great, fell off. Now we have Ray. So and it's kind of odd that all three of them were in the same heat in North Balford. So. I don't know if it's peaking too soon because he hasn't really put a consistent effort other than the last two shows he's won. He started North Balford in third, but then kind of fell off into trying different outfits. So I think this next show will really show if he is the, the man to be or going into the Lloyd finals in a couple of weeks. If, if he comes out with a great performance, top five, I definitely put him in that spot. Uh, but everything's so close that, you know, one bad race and he's down to seventh. So. Yeah, I totally agree. Like you said, the beginning of the year was Molly and Labacane. It was a two-man race the whole way through, and Mitsuing was there, but he was so inconsistent. Now those two are falling off, and Ray's just coming up and up, and even in Calgary, Ray still wasn't as good as he could have been. He had a pretty off Calgary. Came in, did good in St. Walberg again the two nights, and like you said, if he can do another week like that and hopefully win again, he is in the top three, I would say. But those standings, they're so close. Like one bad race, Molly was first, now he's sitting in like fourth or something just because of the the way the standings are. It's just, it changes so much. Perhaps maybe it's saving horses as well. Perhaps maybe getting that right outfit because usually that first half is kind of fine-tuning. Calgary is another example of trying to fine-tune those horses and Wayne Knight, unfortunately, was a victim of that with all those penalties, but now he's in third in the standings, in the driver's standings in the CPCA. Well, it's, what do you make of that? Considering the Calgary hat, it's actually amazing he's there. And that's not a shot at Wayne Knight. It's just how bad Calgary was for him was just, like, I, I don't think anyone could ever expect him to have that many penalties. But I think the other thing with Ray, too, is he's a six-time champion. You gotta remember that it's, this isn't his first time in the, into this. Like he, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to hook all these horses. And he was everyone even said to us, he's getting ready for Calgary. That's what the first part of the season was. So him not doing great wasn't anything to worry about. Now it's this is where the time I'd worry about if Ray Mitzwing's breaking track records and taking shows pretty handily in the second half of the season. Um, I, I'm scared if I'm the bottom driver, especially if he's gonna get in the one barrel coming off in Lloyd final. Yeah, and the thing with Wayne, like when he's in the CPCA, he's actually racing clean. Like he's not getting penalties like he was down in Calgary. And that's the thing, Ray might not have always had the fastest times, but he's always been running clean. There's been races where Molly, R. Labacane, or BJ Carey, those top guys that are always up there get five minute or five seconds in penalties. Ray has been just so clean that I think that's another reason why he's at the top is just he hasn't had those two or three shows or two or three days where he's accumulating 10 minutes, seconds in penalties. So just the way he's been racing, like you said, he's a veteran. He's done this six times. He's a champion. He knows what it takes, and he knows when to peak and when to be able to move in and win the shows and win Lloyd finals. So Moving to another topic, how about this? I don't think any of us would have expected out of the local Junior B lacrosse teams out there, you have the Heat, the Roar, and the Extreme, 
to go the furthest. Well, the Lakeland Heat have done that. They're going to the final, have an opportunity with a couple wins, go to the <coughs> provincial final and host it. All they have to do, of course, is beat Fort Sask Rangers, who are, or Fort Sask uh, or Rebels, that is, uh, in order to actually get that done. They've already completed a couple upsets here in the playoffs. Could the Heat do it one more time and beat the Fort Sask Rebels? Andrew? No, not a chance. I, Fort Sask is a different team. There's a reason. They're going to Tier 1 next year for a reason. They are built to win. If you look at their team, it's actually interesting. Their team doesn't have a lot of 30 goal scorers. It has one guy who scores a lot of goals and then a bunch of guys who are great depth players. But it's how they cycle and how they roll through everything. That's how they beat everybody. That's how they pretty much annihilated Lloyd Minster and how they get through every single series and every game. They just keep going and keep going. It's, it's not one line beating you. It's the entire team and entire transition. So I don't know if Lakeland can hold on to with a team like that. I don't know if anybody can, and there's a reason why they're that good, defending champions and moving on. I think Lakeland can beat them. I feel mm -hmm. they've beat them already twice throughout the season. I know it's a different year or different. They say it's the second season, and what happens in the regular season doesn't matter. Fort Sass lost two games all year. Both came to Lakeland. I feel the way Lakeland's been on such a high against Sherwood Park and uh, Vermilion. Both games, they went and won. In, well, they, they swept Vermilion, which was I thought was crazy. I didn't think they would do that. Went to game three, beats uh, Sherwood sure Park, Park there. I feel they are just so rolling on such a high. And they do all the little things right. Like you said, for, uh, Fort Sask has one big score and the rest fill it. It's the same with... With uh, Lakeland, I feel there's not one guy that they can, if I shut him down, they're done. Like Lloyd, if you shut down Peterson, eh, it's kind of sparse where it's coming from other ways. But in Lakeland, they have so depth of scoring, I feel it's going to be a great series, and I think they'll be able to win. All right, guys, on that note, we're going to take a commercial break. and return, we're going to talk about the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the woes that could be coming to the green and white coaching staff in just a few minutes. <laughs> 